topic is portfolio construction in the midst of the world's massive uncertainty. Why don't we start with how are you thinking through how you construct your portfolio amidst these very volatile times? You each have a very specific focus. Um, so Alan, do you want to start with uh, art and how you think through art doing these days? Sure. So thank you, everyone, uh, for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Alan. I'm the CIO at Masterworks. Uh, our company makes art investable. So fine art paintings that are between $1 million and $30 million in size, we make them investable. We fractionalize the paintings. Uh, and the way that we are thinking about market volatility, to be quite honest, is that if anything, it is more attractive a time to invest in art than it otherwise might be, which is already quite attractive to begin with. Um, art as an asset class is not something that many investors have admittedly ever thought about. And so a lot of what I do in my role is sort of educational in nature to kind of introduce art as an asset class to the investor community for the first time. Um, the asset class itself it's been appreciating at 14% annualized for several decades. Most people don't know this, the way that you might know what stocks have appreciated at, bonds, same idea. Um, and specifically during uh, periods of market turmoil, you know, one of the things I'll say about art, and I'll be open about this, is it's not necessarily the most liquid asset class, as you might imagine, but when we sometimes get the question, you know, how is the art market done at a particular point in time, it's not always the easiest to answer because you don't have a whole lot of real-time pricing. Nevertheless, we actually got lucky as a business in that this year, in the midst of market turmoil, when equities were falling and bonds were falling, you know what was happening right at the same time? auction season in the art market. So it was among the more active periods of time for the art market. How did the art market do? Records were being broken left and right. So it's sort of a, a good way for us to point to a period of time that was very recent to say that the art market seems to have ignored in a lot of ways the market turmoil that's taken place. Um, I could go back in time further and tell you that the art market was positive in the year 2001, it was positive in 2008, it was positive in 2018, and it all sort of brings me back to, and sorry, by way of background, I spent my entire career in the traditional investment management world, so I have a little bit of a nerdy component to me, and what I find to be the most fascinating part about art as an asset class is that it has a correlation profile that I have never seen in my career. And if you'll permit me a moment to explain what I mean by that. So when I used to research every other asset class under the sun and build portfolios for institutions and many other types of investors, the one thing you learn when you look at the correlation profile of just about every asset class is that it usually is as follows. You pick an asset class and you like it because it has a low correlation to some other asset classes but it's inevitably gonna have a higher correlation to other asset classes. It's just sort of the name of the game, that's the world of investments we have. What makes art so unique in terms of its correlation profile is that its correlation is close to zero relative to any asset class you measure it to, measure it up against. I did it relative to 15 major asset classes and I stopped at 15 because quite honestly I got bored, I saw the same result over and over near zero correlation. So we think it's attractive, not only in down markets where there's turmoil, but frankly in, in most markets in general. Excellent, excellent points. Um, one of the um, key issues that we, you know, we've, we've been reporting a lot of is uh, markdowns and the illiquidity factor, and especially given public market comparables, what that means for more illiquid investments. So I wanted to ask um, about the art market, does that, same thesis sort of apply to art when, it, when you look at illiquidity and valuations these days? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> with the art market, as you can imagine, it's a little bit more nuanced than for other asset classes. Um, we've actually, I mean, this, this is taking us back to the early days in Masterworks history. One of the first projects we had was actually building uh, an extraordinary database of all the art market transactions that have ever taken place going back 70 years. 
there were several dozen analysts who probably didn't have necessarily the most exciting job, but it was basically to go through thousands of auction catalogs. Many of them were in paper format, and their job was to take all the transactions that have taken place and put them into a giant database. So we've since built kind of the industry-leading database for all information about the art market, um, but we're also constantly adding to that database in real time. And the way we're doing it is because we have become what we believe is uh, the biggest art buyer in the art market, it's hard to prove definitively, but we're quite confident we are the biggest in the, uh, in the market. Um, what ends up happening now is we have a lot of collectors and institutions who actually come to us and they offer to sell us their art. And each one of those data points actually is extraordinarily valuable because once they come to us, we now know who it is, we know what art they own, and we know how much they want to sell it to us for. So we basically have constantly updated real-time pricing for a whole lot of art that's available globally in the market. Most of the time, just as a side note, we don't actually buy the art because we have stringent parameters around what we're willing to buy and what we're not, but that data gets added to our database. So for valuing the artworks that we own, we do it on a quarterly basis. Um, and it's sort of an interesting thing. There's some element of irony here, but I, I can't help but point it out. You know, for our investors, we know that it brings a lot of peace of mind and trust to tell them that, yes, we do have external valuations, and we do. But if you also take a step back and think about everything I just said about this extraordinary database that we've built, we would argue that our valuation methodology is significantly more accurate than any other third party that might come in and value our art. So nevertheless, yes, we do have external parties that value our art, although we think our valuations are a lot more accurate. Um, in terms of you know, recent history, how have our paintings been doing? Um, I kind of alluded to this in my opening remarks. Uh, the art market basically beats to its own drum. Um, it's, uh, it hasn't really been that impacted by market volatility. In fact, if anything, the art market is up a few percentage points this year despite everything else that's happened in the market. Um, and you know, just as, again, another side note, uh, so we've, we've brought 120 paintings to market worth $500 million since our founding. Um, I believe the weakest performer, and I'm doing this off of memory, I believe the weakest performer uh, with updated pricing is down 10%. I think the strongest is up 80%. So yes, we do have regular valuations, and it does not seem like recent market volatility has had much, uh, much of an impact on the art market.